from 8 to 10 p.m. right here at thebibleforum.net. Uh, you can watch live uh, on Sunday nights or you can come back to the website, as you probably have done, and you can watch the whole show in the little TV window at the bottom. You can also click the word Ustream and go to another website that would give you stuff going back a year or more. You can go to our YouTube page uh, and uh, watch those things without the commercials. We're also uh, simulcasting on the YouTube page under live broadcast, if you know how to do that, uh, from the Bible Forum uh, YouTube page. Uh, this is a beginning effort. We don't know how that's all going to work out. May not do it after tonight. I don't know. I want to talk to you tonight about where the safest place in the world is is to live where is that place jumping to the end of the discussion the safest place is right in the center of God's will but if you're a Christian you know that if you've been to church you know that your pastor's taught you stuff like that has he not he hasn't you need to find another church the center of God's will is the only place a Christian or any human being can ever hope to be safe. But the problem is, I don't know where that place is. We don't know where it's at. We've got a lot of books. Maybe you've read most of them or many of them. We've heard the preaching. Uh, people teach. There's conversations among people about how to know the will of God. And in that discussion, there's just a whole bunch of supposition. And, and some of that supposition uh, has been outright nonsense, uh, to tell you the truth. But the topic is never very far from the Christian's mind and heart. And it comes up anytime there's a decision to be made. It comes up when young people who are sincere about their faith and concerned about God when they are thinking about marriage they want to know is this the will of God for my life looking for a job sometimes just a new car you want to go buy a new car is this the right time should I do this when you're thinking about moving into a, a new home uh, just renting a, a different place, a different kind, or buying a house, or maybe having children or more children. Usually the thing about children comes before the thing about house, but you know why. But whenever the, 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 the subject arises, the issues are always the same. And God gives specific principles in his word, but he does not give specific instruction regarding the individual decisions. He gives principles that govern decisions in general. Consider the marriage relationship. It is probably the most challenging relationship, if not the most challenging reality we ever face. And that's because there are several immutable, unchanging principles that drive the issue, not the least of which is the fact that men and women are different. They just don't look different. They think different. They feel different and in different ways. Their values, their goals, things that are important, all different. And those people all have differing life experiences, growing up in different families, different patterns in that family, childhood experiences. Add to that we have differing morality, different value systems. 
and we have differing goals many of which we learn are conflicting they're not the same we didn't know that till we got married add to this the fact that men and women generally don't think the same and they don't relate to life in the same way and they don't relate to people in the same way and you're starting to see it this is a recipe for disaster this is this is a proverbial witch's brew of problems looking for opportunities and very often the missing and critical dynamic in this particular scenario is God regardless of about all of the above mentioned differences and traps what matters is whether our lives and relationships are reflecting well upon God it isn't that I get my own way or that every area of my life is pleasant or productive at least for me you know I don't have to be productive the Bible says I'm a sinner at heart at the core of my being I want things my way because my way is always the best I am also a finite creature I have limited scope vision understanding and therefore am dependent upon God for everything I have from life to happiness finding this satisfaction is what a life appears to be for most people how can I live a better life yet most people tend to settle for something less or they struggle without ever finding what they were looking for to settle often means giving up that which was at one time either the most or the best in favor of something that's less or in many cases worse in order just to keep the peace or to satisfy someone else's needs or someone else's goals and this can be viewed by me from the inside out as one of life's cruelest ironies and the source of a great deal of heartache and destructive despair to struggle means keeping quiet or engaging in battle polar opposites neither one of which resolves the basic issue but what if this presumed uh, cruelty is actually a blessing what if all the imposed limitations were protecting me from something that is far worse what if my failure and trials were keeping me from becoming an even greater burden or a greater perhaps insufferable snob what if everything I viewed as bad or hurtful or discouraging was actually all about someone else's benefit how would I know if that was the way it was how do I know if this is for me or that's for you I'm going through this because you need to see that as a lesson God is using me to teach you something is that okay but how will I know if God were to come down and say those words to me if he were to say look I want you to do this this and that and I know it's gonna be hard and you're gonna but it's for his benefit 
those children need to see this that woman needs to have this would I be willing to do that well if God came down and said that yeah I'd be willing to do that see I would know that that's the way it's all supposed to work out because God spoke to me and told me that but we don't get that do we we're expected to live our life to live it in terms of the way it's being presented to us without knowing why it's being presented that way without knowing how our response is going to impact it or the rest of our life the Bible's definition of sin is a preoccupation with self to the exclusion of God and of others. The idea that I could do so much more, I could be so much better and glorify God if only I didn't have all this burden I didn't have this sickness. I didn't have this limitation over here. I didn't have this wife, this husband, these children, this job. You name it. You've said it, thought it, or somebody has. Can I tell you a story about a man? His name is John Bunyan. He wrote Pilgrim's Progress and about three, four, five other books. Books that have become classics within the Christian community. Books that teach principles far beyond anything that's being printed today. And he wrote these books largely from prison. He spent the best part of two decades unjustly incarcerated in squalor and near starvation. Summer, winter. And that doesn't even consider the fear and the despair that he must have felt for his family, his wife and his children who had to get along, exist without him, never knowing how this was all going to come out. Disease and sickness were his daily companions. And yet countless millions have continued to benefit from his faithfulness during those years. And the point, I am not the master of my soul nor the arbiter of my fate I'm a Christian I have given all of that to God the God who loves me and has paid an awful price to redeem me to buy me back to buy back my soul the God who loves me and the implications? I don't know what God has in mind for my life. I don't know what would be the best for me. I don't even know me when I begin my journey. And I don't know what changes are going to present themselves tomorrow. The natural reality is that we are all very much blind and deaf. Blind and deaf to whatever it is life is going to hand us. And that's over a wide range of time. I can't tell you what's going to happen next week I don't know my condition a year from now. I certainly don't know if I'll even be here 10 years from now. 
how can I lay out the principles of my life for the four score and ten that God has given? Will I be a, a victim or will I be a conqueror? And whose definition for those words is the most important? The Old Testament prophet Micah said, What therefore is the conclusion of this matter? He said, The conclusion is to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. And whatever it is, it is. Do what is just. This can mean going against the wishes and the values of everyone you know, even the law of the land. Will that make you popular? Will that bring you praise? Will that endear you to others in your family or in the circle of your acquaintances? To do what is just? Do you know how unpopular those people are? To love mercy. In the Bible, mercy is what withholds what is justly due. Yeah, you deserve. But in God's mercy, He doesn't give you that. But a steady emphasis on mercy isn't helpful. And it isn't just. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Children do not learn the importance, the important issues of life from a parent who makes certain that they never reap what they've sown. And it certainly isn't the way God treats us. And that's what Jesus was about. I deserve hell. And there is no way that God can stay God and not send me to hell. Unless, out of mercy and by His grace, He provides another, a perfect sacrifice to take the sin of the world and remove it no longer an issue and then to make it all about Jesus what have you done with my son that's what God has done and mercy plays a big role in that but to only and always respond with justice is to be unnecessarily discouraging. Discouraging those who are in training, like me and you and children in your home. To do what is just, but to love mercy. And then as you live your life, live it humbly before God. Humility recognizes who and what we really are. It's a lowly walk compared to one that is haughty and prideful. And it is in this context that God calls to us, gives us instruction and patterning. He says, walk, live before me with the constant knowledge and the constant understanding that all you are and all you accomplish and all you have is from me. That's an attitude, an attitude of submission that trusts God implicitly. Does any of that sound like what the world is teaching our children today? What the world taught you and taught me? Today the world is telling us that we are special and that we can have it all and that we've got to, we only go around once, we've got to get all the gusto. I know that's an old commercial. 
And God says to walk humbly. Does that sound like anything you heard from a life coach, from a motivational speaker, from a health wealth preacher, the Joel Osteen wannabes? Does any of that sound like what your heart is telling you? You see, it is indigenous to men's souls to exalt self, to be all you can be, to reach your human potential, to never let anyone control your destiny, to be no man's slave. Don't let anybody rob you of who you are. And that's all sound advice if you are the master of your fate. If we are on this earth to fulfill our destiny, if we exist to make a difference, what if the message of life is to demonstrate grace under pressure or persecution? What if my children, my family, my community needs to see this lesson because of something they will face long after I'm gone. And God has chosen to use my life as that illustration. What if I need to do this because of my own prideful condition? Because I think too highly of myself. I need to be brought down. Or what if all of this happens simply to glorify God? You say, well, if I knew all of those things, I could make this decision easier. Yeah, then it wouldn't be faith. And that's the point. The one who loves God bows before God's will and purpose, not because they understand how it's all going to work, but just simply out of love. I love God. God. I don't demand God to give me an explanation. I just honor Him. The one who is above all. And then whatever happens, happens. And that's not fatalism. The Christian is not bowing to fate. He's not taking everything and anything that happens as an immutable law. The Christian is serving a person, not a circumstance. This person has presented every conceivable situation and circumstance of life with a principle, with a prescription. This person has lived this life as a human being, feeling what I feel, experiencing what I experience. And this person has suffered more than any man on earth. suffered more than I ever will. The truth is that much of what bur burdens us is the result of our own actions, our own selfism, our own pride. And regardless of what we think or what men say, living in harmony and balance with God's word is still the only way to know God's will and purpose. In this life, there is grace for trials, mercy for failures, blessings for patience. If I do things my way, I reap what I sow. And I don't have anybody to blame but me. But if I live in harmony with God's word and do what he has told me in the scriptures, is my responsibility then I am comfortable I am satisfied because whatever it is it's on him I do what I do in honor to him and he takes care of the difference can you do that